Hey, welcome to this video. Today, we will be making a design wall that you can see here in the background. So, we will something like this here. We will also then make short the environment, but the main focus of this episode should remain in this designed wall. So, you can also, of course, we will be making this in geometry nodes. So you can change everything here. This is how much walls we want to have. And you can change everything here. You know geometry nodes. To begin, we of course need the newest Blender version because the newest is always the best. <laughs> no, that isn't true, but sometimes has some bugs. So anyways, let's use the newest. Then we can start. So how to make such wall. So let me explain the, the crown structure. So we will beginning with a curve and we need this curve to define evenly distributed stops. And then we will be just distributing other curves then with those positions that we use of the lower point. And then this curve, this curves, we can then displace like this. And we can then convert this curves to planks of wood. Of course, we will be starting with the default cube. And then we will be going into geometry nodes. Like this. I will be stretch the node tree here a little bit because so we have some room to play in and then we will go with shift a into the add menu you can also go here on the top add and then curve and i will be going into the curve primitives and we want to have the curve line and we can just place it in here it will cut the noodle here and now we have replaced basically the cube with this basic curve. But we don't want to have this curve going up in the Z axis. So I want to have this on the X axis and maybe five meters like this. And I want to have it centered. So here also minus five meters like this. And now we have our basic curve. Now we want to instance the curves that are going up on this curve. So let's duplicate this curve and just plug it into the instances. So of course it doesn't go into the X axis. We want to have it on the Z like this. And now we can see there are only two curves, but we definitely want to have more planks going like this. How can we do this? So unfortunately, the curve primitive node has only two points, the start and the end points. So we have to subdivide the curve or resample the curve so it has more resolution. So we can go here with Shift A another time into the Add menu. Under the submenu Curve, we can search for the resample curve node. We can just drag it in here. And now we can define how much curves or planks do we want to have in the end. So maybe something like this should work. 100 to have it a round number. And I want to have the whole thing a little bit taller like this. So now we have the base structure and now we obviously want to convert this curves to uh, geometry. And for this we will use the curve to mesh node, plug it in here. And I will be using another curve for the profile curve. And let, we don't want to have it in the Z axis. We want to have it in the X axis like this, maybe 0.1. And this is already too much, so it's overlapping. But we want to have maybe 0.03 something like this and also to make it centered minus 0 
on the top here. And now we have something like this. We then want to extrude those pieces to have more geometry to work with. So let's, let's use the extrude mesh node in the mesh submenu like this. You can play here with the depth, but I don't want to have it smooth shaded like this. It looks a bit, little bit strange. So I use the set shade smooth node and I will uncheck this. And now to give a little bit better an overview, I'll just turn on the cavity and so that we can see everything in here like this. It's more clear what we are doing. And now we want to displace our planks with the noise texture. So let's do that. We can change positions of things with the set position node and then we can use a noise texture in here and we can plug it into the offset but we don't want to have that because it's going to displace in every direction. We only want it to get displaced in the y direction. And another thing is only the instances get another position. So we have to realize the instances to get on all those informations like vertices. So now we've solved that and it's, it looks even crazier. And so we have to use a vector combine x y z and we only want to have it in the y axis like this and then we can see maybe the noise texture is way too big so we can use it like this and it's looking rather wavy we have not that much resolution here here on the top we have only two points so one here on the top and one here on the bottom we obviously want to have more, so I plug it in here also and maybe turn that up a bit. And now we can see we are already achieving some great results. And of course, I want to change the scaling a bit and maybe the distortion also. And I also want to have a color ramp to play with the contrast a little bit. And I think we can leave it for now like this. If we now want to go into rendered mode, first of all, we have to go to cycles. Then we can see it's fully white and that is really boring. So first of all, we have to assign a material. And for this, I want to use my own materials because I have a material pack. If you want to have materials, you can check it out. There is also a free version here on my Gumroad, a free version and the advanced version. And you can check them out both if you want to. They are really great materials in it. And I want to use some materials out of it. So I want to go into the wood section and I want to use this wood white material. And I can drag it on it and nothing happens. This is because we have to first assign a material. So set material node, and then we can set this wood white material, and now it works. So we have to set it again because the information of the material was gone because we don't use the group input. We are using completely new inputs here, curve lines. We can of course fine tune it. So maybe make it a little bit, scale it up. So my materials here have also nice node groups, so you can use it relatively easy and you can play with it however you want. So with my material pack, the ground is relatively easy. We just use this plane here and then we go into the material pack and we go to ground and here we have this mat, wet muddy material and I just drag it on here and boom it works. So I will also turn off the background here 
and I will add some point lights like this to make it a little bit more interesting like that. I will turn off the multiple importance so we don't see them in this puddles here. And now the last thing I want to do is I want to scatter those plants that I had here. I want to scatter them also here on the bottom. And for that I used Sketchfab for, for some models. You can use here your own. So if you search for fans, you can use some models here that you can download and then use. And so I will import my one for now. Here it is imported and I have to scale it down of course. And then I have to apply scale and rotation and I will lift it a little bit under the ground. And so now how can we scatter or paint those objects onto our muddy ground here? For this, if you guessed it, we will of course use geometry nodes and I want to have points on here. I want to also contain my ground. So I'll join it back in. And of course we don't want to have points in here. So we have to instance on those points. We want to have plants. And I drag our plant in here. So it gets instanced on our points. And this looks really nice, but we want to make something else. <laughs> so I drag the size down. Then we don't want to have it instanced everywhere. So I will then use a vertex group. But for now, we can see they're all rotated in the same direction. We don't want that. We want to have it randomly. And for this, we have a node, a random value. So this node gives each um, each instance another value and we can also set it to vector and plug it into the rotation and now they get random rotated but we only want to have it on the z-axis and we can go crazy with this value and now it looks a lot better and we can also randomize the scale a bit if we duplicate it and set it to float and plug it into the scale of course it's a little bit too big and I'll leave it on the range like so now they're looking relatively randomized but now I want to paint them on dedicated positions on here and for this I want to add a vertex group in here on the object data properties panel and I call it paint but how can we now input our vertex group informations into geometry nodes. It's relatively easy. You can just drag from the group input to the density because we want to have the density of our point, point distribution influenced by the vertex group that we have to import from the group input. And then here on the modifier tab, we can, we have here our density input and we don't want to have it in here we want to have an attribute for this and we want to have our vertex group and with this we can paint but not right now because we have too low resolution so i'll just drag in here a subdivision surface modifier fast apply it and now we can weight paint on here and now you can see it's only one, but that is because we have a really low density. So I want to multiply our result here. And now you can see it's already looking a lot better. So with this, we can now paint in here and we can set it to subtract. So I don't want to have it them in the puddles. Maybe like this. And I also want to add in here some like this. 
maybe here also. I hope you learned from this. I think it's relatively nice design. And yeah, this is a video after a long time. And that's because I'm having not that much ideas right now. Um, but I hope you uh, liked this episode. And if you want to have the material pack, the link is in the description. You can grab also the free version if you want to. It's not that much materials and not the great ones, but you can try it if you want to. If you, if you have recommendations for more videos, I am always open. And thank you all for watching. See you next time.